So I want to talk to John in hey, John. Oregon. Hey, John. How you doing? You're live with Eric and Jamie. Hello. How are you guys? Hey. The lights are on. We're so marvelous. Excited. Um, Ain't no Jesus no here. Heat. What I'm, you know, what I'm wondering is if we can get the the thing behind the green us. screen. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. What do you want to talk about today? Yeah, I was gonna say I you're to talk cracking about the whip the on Mark there. Hmm? Sorry. I wanted to talk about the nature of the genetic code uh, a while back. So I, I teach genetics and evolution. I work with universities to make teaching materials for teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a YouTube channel where I mm. display these as well as them going to school stated clearly. So John, well, John, why do you hate yeah. God? <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah. I, I have my God's not there. Why do you hate God? <laughs> Is your mom a monkey? <laughs> Is your grandma a monkey? How far back before your family is monkeys? Boom! That's actually, a, yeah. that's, I didn't make that up. That's, to be clear, not a straw man. And act, never mind. Just let it go. Let it go, Jane. <laughs> oh, yeah, go yeah. ahead, John. I it's hear all so these dark. arguments. I get all these arguments on YouTube mm -hmm. all the time. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. it, you know, teaching things in an actual classroom versus teaching online, it's really interesting what kinds of things come out when people are behind a, you know, username. But uh, yeah. a while back, you guys had a caller who had a, who made a, a statement that I've seen a million times as well. He was arguing for the existence of God because of the genetic code. It was kind of like a two-part argument. So the first part is the genetic code is a real coding language. That's his first statement. False. Uh, only intelligent minds can invent coding languages. And then he concludes that that's evidence of an intelligent designer. John, can you and please you smash guys, that to pieces mm -hmm. for us? Well, yeah. Oh, and also so that like intelligent guys, designer is Jesus. <laughs> you, <laughs> the unstated. You guys him on the first. Go ahead. Yeah. You guys had attacked him on the first uh, statement that the genetic code is a real code. He's actually right on that. The genet according to information theory, according to, um, you know, there was this paper back in the 40s, like 1940 by Claude Shannon, about what um, communication is. It was the, the mathematical model of communication. And he outlines a, how, what a communication system is. And you know, whatever, however many years later that we actually cracked the genetic code, it was an absolute perfect match to that. And that, that paper allowed us to really understand what, what communication is, what coding languages are, and that allowed the, the digital revolution to, to take hold. And the genetic code really is a coding language in that same sense. The, so his first statement was actually true. It's his second statement that only an intelligent designer can invent codes, that is false. And we, the study of how communication systems evolve is in the subfield of evolution, evolutionary biology called uh, signaling theory. Mm -hmm. And essentially when you have, well, I mean, I could kind of go anywhere with this, but <laughs> do you feel like you need any more information on why the genetic code is a legitimate code? Um, um, no, I think well. That actually, so actually, I okay. I have a question because you're saying it matches the definition of uh, uh, code in signaling theory as far as communication. Um, can you elaborate on that? Because as far as I'm aware, like DNA doesn't take an intelligence to generate in the same way that a pattern on the side of a mountain that a stream runs down doesn't take and intelligence to communicate. So I'm wondering if you can elaborate on specifically what you mean by that, or rather specifically how that fits into uh, information theory. Okay, so you've got, um, well, let's just talk about what information is. So if a physicist is talking about information, they're talking about physical information. So the, the mass of an object, its speed, and physical, entities can can communicate with each other if i get hit by a bus <laughs> the the hardness of the bus the speed of it is communicated into my skull you know that's uh, that's okay. how communication that's just normal physical communication 
and that's physical information. There's information in every photon and every uh, atom about its mass and um, uh, direction, all, all sorts of things like that. So, so the way you're describing information, at least physical information, almost just sounds like facts about reality that can be understood. Yes. Okay. So that's different than coded information. Coded information is very specific. So um, if, uh, how do I describe this? I usually use visual aids with this, but for when you have coded information, AIDS you have an already, encoder right, so. and a decoder, and, and then you have a message. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. I'm saying a word, like if I'm, if I'm hungry and I want to go to lunch, I'm going to take that idea and decode that into vibrations of my voice box, mm -hmm. and that's going to be transmitted through the air. The purpose of a code is to create a message that can be transmitted you know, you, you've got this idea in your head, and you want to get that into someone else's head, so you have to decode it into something that's, tr that's transmissible, because mm -hmm. you can't just be thought directly. And then the receiver has to understand that code in advance and know how to decode it so that they get that message inside their head that, that you have, that you've delivered. And it, one of the really interesting things about this is that the entire process is physical. You are physically making vibrations with your mouth mm -hmm. when you speak, when you use a word. And that's physically interacting with the ear, and then just physically interacting with the brain, and the brain's, the brain's processing that and decoding that. The entire thing is, is physical. Same with your computer. You, you hit a button yeah. on the keyboard. Same as your mind. It's an electric pulse. Right? I, I mean, I'm, so, I'm sort of, well, OK. I, I'll so stop I, myself from asking what process isn't physical, but uh, to be just to clarify, is DNA communicating information, or sorry, encoded information under that yeah. definition? So, so a, a gene in the genome, it creates a messenger RNA. The messenger RNA is transmitted from the nucleus of the cell mm -hmm. out to the cytoplasm, and it's received by a ribosome, which then reads it to create a protein. And if you change, um, okay. So you change the does code, it, you change the protein. See, I, yeah. I, I think that where, where, what is that gets me is fall people. In, it fall into the same category as when I'm communicating with you in encoded language or with the uh, encoded information. I mean, Sorry, say that again. Does that fall, would that fall into the same categorization in information theory as when I'm communicating this question to you right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because. What are the limits the... on what defines a, for example, you use the word reading, right? So is a mountain reading the raindrops dropped by a cloud when they're dropped? Yeah. I, I mean, really, it feels like there's uh, a, agency that's being put on these things, the, the yeah, it, coding and the reading of that thing, right? Yeah, so the messenger are, RNA, while it may have a code, it is it not bringing it to a thinking agent that is decoding it and reading it. You know, and so I think that's where the disconnect is for a lot of people is we're using language that is usually steeped in thinking minds. And so if I were to pull out, you know, and, and have a, a ribosome under a microscope, it's not going to be like, what's up? You know, and, and tell me about its day. Um, and so in that way, it, that's the distinction that we're trying to make here. Is, isn't isn't yeah. the, um, the read-write part of it, it's the agency behind it that people ascribe to it. And is that about right? Yeah, I mean, that's the point well, that I'm trying to get to because the... Well, so you, you, you don't have... Uh, what we have is we have a, a set of symbols, which are codons. A codon is three nucleotides. And the ribosome is set up in advance to well, we have a set of automatically chemicals. read, automatically read those codons mm -hmm. um, in a specific way. And you actually have there are some organisms that use a different, slightly different genetic codes. So there's actually different languages that can be spoken. If you take so uh, one of your genes, th that one I, I have to jump on as well because I, in information theory, 
I, I'm, I'm sorry, there's a difference between the language English and the language, in quotes, if it is properly called that, of a type of DNA. I don't know whether information theory accounts for that, but there's very clearly a distinction there. Now, in linguistics, there's a distinction. In information theory, there's not. In linguistics, okay. in, in linguistics a language is something that humans use to communicate to each other. They have the human aspect inserted in there. In computer programming, we don't. We don't care if it's if it's a server well, talking to a... To, to be clear, you've jumped from biology to computer science. I, I, think, I right. think the catch, again, is on the... Yeah, is that there's an agency, what, what we would define as an agency. If you want to get into philosophical statements about a deterministic universe, um, and how, on, on a larger scale, a human is a, biologic, a series of biological systems, and on a smaller scale, things that read and copy DNA are biological systems, and so it's a level of complexity. If, if you want to just talk about, I don't know, it's the same thing but scaled up, we can have that conversation, but generally when people are talking about communication, they mean what people think of or define as a thinking agent communicating to at least one other thinking agent or, or recording verbal information in that way. Right, so for well, example, when you, like, for example, when you said we have a series of three letters, I mean, I, I don't mean to jump in there, but no, you have a series of three chemicals. When, I, when you have A, B, and C that are written on a page, they're made with the same ink. This is this is outside of my you, scale. These Roger. these are weirdest these way to ask for a raise. Um, yeah. So I, you're getting held up on the fact that we represent them with with uh, letters. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying when you say they're three letters, it's I'm just clarifying that language as as well. Yeah, because there's a difference between yep. and, and 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 we're getting hung up on it. Well, I mean, we represent is, all of those with letters. Well, and we're getting hung up hung up on it because there are people who call into us and say, yeah. "No, these are real thinking things, and it is yeah. a real language, and that language was written by a god." Mm -hmm. And so we Jesus. need to. What we're doing is because you know what you're talking about. We're trying to pick those yeah. things apart so that we can better understand it to make better arguments yeah. in the future. I'm not trying to argue that, oh no, your understanding of DNA encoding is flawed because yeah. you, we're just, you, we're act, just... you have actually a working knowledge of it <laughs> as opposed to a cursory knowledge. Um, like I, I have sufficient knowledge to interview you about it is basically the limit of mine, whereas you have sufficient knowledge to teach it and prepare teaching materials and have a YouTube channel devoted to it. Um, which are three things that I cannot do. But I'm, I'm trying to clarify, because you've, you've presumably heard the argument like, oh, okay, well, if there's letters, then it's a language, and if it's a language, therefore Jesus is talking. Well, I mean, it really should be, it, it, it really is a coding language. I mean, a, linguist, a linguist wouldn't want to call it a language because they specifically use that for people talking to other people. Well, because it's but, different. But if you talk to a biologist who studies the language of animals, as animals are communicating to each other, a flower communicates to a bee. Um, one of the problems with this is that you've got different fields that are using the same word in different ways. Well, okay, yeah. Uh, that happens in I think, uh, I, I think that's science what, as well. I think that's what we were trying to drill down Yeah, to, it's just all. that, yeah. Yeah. Um, To be clear, do, uh, do things that read and write and encode and, and communicate DNA are they thinking agents, and does that require a mind? No, there's there's certainly no mind instead of I mean, a mind. Is but how can you know that if you have Jesus? No. Okay, sorry. Um, Jamie's yeah. being. <laughs> I'm being a little bit uh, uh, snark. That's okay. Um, I'm being a little snark. That's all right. It, uh, the Smurfs would be a much better show if it was called John. the Snarks. Thank you for calling. This has actually been well, really enlightening. Yeah, oh, did, I don't want to. I don't want to cut him off yet because if if the entirety of his call was me like trying to get to the point where I was trying to figure out whether he was saying that DNA had an agency and trying to draw the distinctions, then it's going to be. Yeah. That, that thank is. you for th thank you for be, being an excellent caller, and uh, uh, I want to let you get back to what you were saying. I guess. <laughs> okay. 
um, the we don't have it doesn't something doesn't have to be an, an intelligence like a human in order to communicate. Your computer can communicate. Um, you know, a flower communicates to a bee. These things happen naturally. And the study of how these language systems evolve is called signaling theory. And how signaling theory works is you have two evolving entities. And one of them picks up on a cue that another one is sending off. So um, one of the really kind of famous examples is that you've got these gazelles that are being chased by uh, predators. And when a gazelle is in a herd, it can't run fast as fast as it would on its own because it's tripping over its neighbors. Mm -hmm. So the predator can easily catch up to the herd. And then it need, the predator is trying to select the weakest uh, animal to chase down because it mm -hmm. doesn't want to screw this up. And so it's looking for signs of which ones are weak. And it just so happens that gazelles start to freak out and jump vertically when they um, – when they can't run forward because there's slow animals in front of them. And so when they jump really high, the predator knows that one is really strong. I shouldn't try my chances with that one. This one is not jumping very high. I'm going to go after that one. So, so this is just a cue. The, the, the animals are not, when this first starts to evolve, the animals are not doing this on purpose. They don't know how to communicate to the predator. But if okay. this happens long enough, they will evolve to jump high, and actually there's going to be selection pressure for them to jump abnormally high. Mm. And we see this with a lot of species that are hunted by cheetahs. They jump abnormally high, and they actually lose the ability to run fast because evolution tweaks their bodies to, to jump vertically and to send this signal. Yeah. <laughs> and when, so when, when drafting a basketball team, gazelles. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, got, and oh, signaling theory. It's called it's signaling theory spotting. Something. Yes, yes. I read it in the comments. I, okay. I, I don't I was know. About to, but I was about I was to like, say, oh. like, have no. you just been sitting over there waiting for your, waiting for your moment? Actually, um, nope, nope, nope. Um, th there's a th there's revealed. someone in the uh, YouTube live chat who knows about this stuff and knows what you're talking about, and. Um, this is just so outside of, at least for me, I know this is outside of my range of knowledge that I feel like this is a class which I would take. I just, I, I don't feel like I could communicate this well. Have you thought about communicating this? Uh, like on a, like for example, on a YouTube channel. Or one maybe that you, you might could be do it professionally and prepare educational materials. Yeah, so I've I've got I've got a long form one that I did just interviewing an engineer about what genetic information is. Why don't you plug it? What's your show? Which is I'm gonna watch it. Stated casually. Stated casually is that one, and I think the title of that video is What is genetic information? Rock on, man. And we go over that and draw stuff out and stuff. But I would like to do an actual animation on it eventually. Because it, this is a this is a thing that comes up from creationists all the time mm -hmm. and they almost have a good argument. <laughs> Almost, but, they, but not quite. Yeah, and, it's better than some of the uh, others. Most people, most people respond in the wrong way. They attack the code when they should be attacking the idea that genetic information has to be, or that that information has to be in mind. Systems can only be created, right? That's the that's the false part. Ah, Communication okay. systems can evolve. We know how they evolve. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I'm 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 stoked. I'm gonna check out your channel. Thank you for calling in. Um, yeah, really and fun. keep in touch. Actually, send it. Send an email, and or Facebook, right. and or tweet. Yeah, you can I, I, or Instagram. I, add I, me on Snap. That. Cool. All right. Thanks for having me. Take care, brother. Yeah. Thanks. Send hate mail to. Do you see that? Huh. Where was the, it? The, the uh, the lower third said send hate mail to and then it had the the email address. Nice.